Hey everyone, and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Star Trek, the original series, season 2, episode 26. It is the final episode of season 2. It is called Assignment Earth. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. Uh, apologies, this was a week off between this one and the last one. Uh, it was not intentional, but there you have it. Uh, but hey, so... Last episode of season two, uh, my cat is playing with something behind the monitor and it is a little distracting. I can just hear... I can hear Didn't noise. take long for the cat to cause problems, did it? Hey, it's topical for this episode. I mean, uh, yeah, it is, it is. But I'm still going to give the cat shit because they're evil. Yeah, we got a cat in this one and Spock's a cat person. Of course he is. So, you know, Spock's confirmed the goat all time of Star Trek. I about that. Yeah, he's a goat. Uh, so, so, yeah. What is that cat playing with now? That is something else. I just took what he was playing with away from him. <laughs> also, why did you say goat of all time? I mean, that kind of defeats the point of saying goat, doesn't it? I agree with that, yes. Right, I've grabbed the cat. Right, we've grabbed the cat. Right, we're good. So, right. what is the plot? We pl start this now. Yeah, what's the plot of Assignment Earth? The plot of Assignment Earth... <laughs> Is that, and I thought this was a little bit weird. How we just start the episode and Kirk's like, "We're in the twentieth century," and I'm like, "What? You know, showing us how they got here?" And then no, top, no, they don't show us getting back either. Yeah, and on top of that, they basically just say, "Yeah, we, this is intentional. We came here on purpose for a mission. Yeah. We never really find out what the mission is because they never really do the mission. No, things kind of just happen." They get sidetracked with other things, uh, which is this mysterious character named Gary Seven, who they kind of accidentally intercept when he's trying to beam to the planet. And they get him on the ship. And then he beams down to Earth. He kind of breaks free because they, they don't trust him. You know, Kirk's like, oh, well, you say you're doing something good for the, you know, for, for the planet and, you know, to try to avert destruction, but we can't really trust you. And Gary Seven's like, oh, you're from the future. You've got a Vulcan with you. That's weird. Uh, but I need to go down there. I need to save Earth. So he ends up breaking out. And apparently he's had people down there already who were meant to be carrying out this mission. He ends up trying to carry out the mission. Kirk and Spock go down to the surface. It's you know present day, 1968. And they're trying to chase him down. And he's trying to carry out his mission, which is basically to save the Earth from World War III starting. He's trying to stop the Cold War from escalating into actual nuclear war. That's, yes. the, that's the gist of the episode. That's, that's the thing. And he's got a cat. He plays like a James Bond villain. At first, when he when he steps in with the cat, yeah, but he's great. So that's not. He he starts as a James Bond <laughs> villain, and then he becomes basically James Bond, but better. And, uh, don't get ahead of yourself. He he's an alien on a mission. I'll, I'll give you that he's he's better than Lesenby. He's an alien on a mission to <laughs> to sabotage a nuclear missile so that it doesn't start World War Three. He, and he's got a cat. He's got a cat sidekick who he speaks to. He's better than James Bond. So after that cup, due to technical difficulties, we've established that James Bond is not as good as Gary Seven. <laughs> the mysterious we, man. We, we did establish no such thing. We did establish that. Connor was all garbled, but he was agreeing with me. He's just, he's just, he's just too nervous now. He's going back on his word. <laughs> he's got a cat. I like how at one point he's actually lying on top of what the you know the the, the the I don't want to call it scaffolding, but the the you know the structure around the, the space shuttle, the you know the the rocket, and he's yeah. lying on top of the the beam, and he's like tinkering with the you know inside the the shuttle, and the cat's just on his back as he's doing this casually. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's great. Uh, my cats like to lie on my back, so I'm, I I I can relate to that at some point in some way. Not so much the being that high in the air and tinkering with uh, nuclear technology, but... I, I was really expecting more from the cat, like the cat was actually a person. Well, I, th I think the cat was a person. But I don't, we wouldn't really get anything from it. Well, we, no, we got a joke at the end where the, the, the secretary <laughs> sees it's a person. Yeah, yeah but not... I mean, I mean, in terms of the plot, we didn't really get anything from it with that. Maybe he comes back. Maybe we get more... Uh, Gary Seven and his I, cat. I, I, I'm going to say this now. I was a little like going like, what the hell is going on with this episode? So I actually read the wiki. Oh, uh, uh, this one. This was uh, meant to be a backdoor pilot. Oh, for for Gary Seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Assignment Earth. Oh, is that what the show was going to be called? I think so. Yeah. And it was going to be like him and his team, or maybe just him. Yeah, because yeah, obviously we know the ratings weren't great at the end of season two of, of Check. 
Yeah. And so they were looking at what, what they could do, and this was a, a backdoor pilot for a potential spin-off. But it's, it's funny knowing that now, because I actually, one of my, my thoughts on this episode is that it's one of the few times in the show where it felt like it made Kirk and Spock side characters in someone else's story. It kind of yeah. focused more on Gary Seven doing his thing for a lot of the episode. Uh, which which be... is why I looked it up, because I was like, this this feels really strange. Um, and that, that, that'll be the thing with the cat then. That was being set up for its own show. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that said, despite the weirdness and despite the backdoor, backdoor pilotness of it, I actually kind of like this one. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, I think it helps that he's quite likable. The stuff with the cat's kind of funny. His secretary, who again was probably going to be a a regular character on on the new Most show, likely. yeah, uh, was also pretty likable. Which it it kind of has that thing where they feel good enough to be their own show, which I guess is credit to it that it's a proper pilot in that sense. Yeah, because you know, sometimes you have like guest stars come in for these small roles and they feel like oh they're just they didn't spend time casting that properly. Whereas these characters they spent time because they thought they were going to give them a whole show. You can tell, can't you? Yeah. I assume it didn't become a show, though, since I've never heard of it. I, I assume as much, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, despite the fact that it makes Kirk and Spock just kind of be chasing after him in a bit of comedy, and that's all they kind of amount to all episode, it mostly made for a fun episode, so I can't... No, I agree. It's almost a shame that this wasn't ever an actual show, because I'd, I'd have been interested in it. Yeah, it, it might have been fun. Uh, but hey, but no, it, it was enjoyable. Uh, I, I think... It's weird that the finale was a backdoor pilot. That's that's a strange. It is a strange choice for it, but it's where it fell, I suppose. I guess, yeah, yeah. They, they were as concerned with uh, the order back then, obviously. No, they'll just like, eh, that'll do. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so they end up chasing him down to the planet, and he's he's got like his fancy like secret wall that spins around into a computer. I actually really like the computer. It's got an AI, and it's it's kind of it's got a bit of an attitude. Yeah, it's a bit snarky in it. Yeah. It's uh like no, I don't believe you. That you're uh, this agent from the other planet, like like I'm expecting. You only have to prove it. Give, give me some other things. And then you have to stand there and could, could. yeah, it. that was a bit um, expositiony. It was, but it was funny. So I'm I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, no, okay, that's fair enough. It's like tell me what you're doing. What's your mission? Okay, yeah. no, I'm gonna need more than that. Who are these people? It's like all right, okay. Here's the plot spelled out in in thirty seconds. That is true. That is true. But at least did they, they did it with some humor. They did it with a bit. Uh, they did you know, razzle dazzle as opposed to just standing there and doing it for, you know, boring reasons. <laughs> no, no, that's true. They, they, they spruced it up a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I think the biggest thing is, uh, not getting to see the, the, the ongoing rivalry between the secretary and the cat, which, the, which they were clearly setting up at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think I'd have had fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else believes that the cat's... I mean, obviously he knows the cat's also a real person. He's talking to it because he knows that the cat can understand him. Yeah. But, you know... Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's a very kind of... It feels very of its time. It's, it's got that very farcical 60s kind of vibe to it. But I think that's kind of what makes it work. Yeah. Like I said, you know, it, it really reminds me of, of James Bond from the time. You know, it's like, okay, we'll have some fun. We've got gadgets. We're doing some spy stuff, essentially. But it's kind of in that that goofy tone. Yeah, I I, I think I think what I liked about it over James Bond because I'm I, I do not like James Bond. This is something that should be should be mm -hmm. made clear. I've never been a fan of James Bond. Uh, is it? He doesn't have the the. Uh, he has. The, he, he's a bit cool, but he's not like. He feels a bit more uh, less egotistical in his he's coolness. He's not suave. Yes, uh, he's cool. He kind of knows he's cool. But he's not. Like, there's a moment actually later on where uh, the secretary's got his fancy little like, sonic screwdriver thing, and she's pointing it at Kirk, and he's like, "Hey, no, don't point that at him. It's, on, it's set to lethal." And he stops her. So he's got a bit of a, you know, he's got some morals. He's got a code. He, as much as he's working against Kirk at this point, and this is the other thing. The episode could ultimately like everyone's working for the better reason. Like everyone's actually doing something good. He's a he is a little bit Doctor Who, isn't he? He's a little bit Doctor Who. Yes. I mean, obviously, this was only, what, a couple of years after that. So, mm. you, know, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some, like, oh, we, we want some of that. Bit of Doctor Who. Bit of, I mean, that's just things that were popular at the time. Yeah. <laughs> James Bond's in the theatres, Doctor Who's on TV. Uh, yeah, let's mush them together with uh, a little bit of, I don't know, what else was big at the time? It's a good question. I think the outfit the woman who was really the cat was wearing was making me think of I Love Genie a little bit. I don't know if that was around this time exactly. I think it was the 60s, though. 
Yeah, okay. I could Makes be wrong, sense. though. That may be my memory failing me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it really does feel like, okay, what, what's, what, what can we do that will be, you know, getting some ratings? Yeah. But not in a bad way. Yeah, ultimately the plot is he goes to this military base, he tries to sabotage this thing because it'll scare everyone out of launching their nu- nukes so that they won't start World War Three. And he kind of does that. Kirk and Spock are trying to figure out what he's doing and try to stop him, and they almost stop him at one point, but then kind of let it go through, and that's kind of the, 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 the whole thing. Uh, what tickled my fancy a little bit <laughs> was at the end of the episode, Kirk and Spock are standing in their outfits, which, by the way, I, I laughed every time... Spock is in a in a culture that doesn't know about him. He's always wearing a hat of some kind. Uh, he, he had multiple hats in this episode. Multiple. Uh, so he um, they're standing in their, their, their uniforms, and they don't even like make a point of trying to explain to the particularly the Earth women, the secretary, like who they are, where they're from. They just kind of joke and say, "Ha, ah, you know, we can't tell you everything." Ha ha, and then they beam up. They actually beam up in front of her. <laughs> And they don't even think, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that in front of the 20th century well, women. Let's go out into the hall first. Yeah, but let's not do that. They just yeah. beam up. Uh, in fact, speaking of that, at one point, when they get beamed up from the, the military base, they get beamed up with two security officers who are pointing guns. No, it's, it's the police officers at the uh, at the, yeah. the office when they're, they're getting uh, seven. They get beamed up with the two police officers because the police officers have shown up and all four of them beam up and then Kirk's like hey Scotty put them back down <laughs> so then the two cops just go back down to the office and they're just sort of staring like, it's like uh, Gary uh, was, was this you know was that? Yeah. it was a funny episode it wasn't it didn't really poke at a lot of interesting ideas it was very simple it was, uh, yeah. farcical action plot but it was mostly pretty likeable it was, and and sometimes that's enough. Yeah, like I say, I think the reason why that that's the case, I think it's because, like I said, they cast all these other roles because they were meant to be regular characters on this new show. So they actually got pretty good actors and made sure the characters were likable and wrote them a bit, wrote, wrote, yeah, wrote them a bit better to say the right word. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that's why it ultimately ends up being quite an enjoyable little episode, even if it's not going to be like one you remember when you're like, oh, the best Star Trek episodes or the episodes that. You know, brought up all the greatest Star Trek ideas, or poked at your mind, or did all these things. No, I think it'll be memorable for doing something so different, though. Mm, yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, also, Gary Seven is immune to the uh, the old Vulcan pinch. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, and I wonder if that's because, like, hey, come watch his new show because he's that good. He's that much of a badass. He can. Uh, I think he, it is. It's he can withstand Spock. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think um, uh, it's, all, it's all it's all very amusing. Um, also, what was gone? I was going to say what was cracking me up as well. At one point, Spock is like asking people around the ship for their opinions on what's going on, and he sits there in the chair in the, the conference room, and like everyone he talks to comes up in the camera. Like he has like a camera on, check yeah. off, and he's he, he's like turning, looking. He's like, yes, uh, Captain, I'm looking into it now. And, you know, and then there's another point where it cuts to Scotty in this camera that he's looking at, and. Scotty actually does a thing, like, you know how like, in, like a, 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 I might call it a VT, uh, but like when you've got a piece of camera where there's like a, a, a host talking to the camera, someone who's presenting a TV show, uh, not, not in a, a studio necessarily, more, more on location when they're doing like a little documentary or something like that, or you know, you, you've got them out in the, on location and the way he, kind of, he sort of walks in from the side of the engineering and walks towards the camera talking to him, it felt like one of those little bits. It does. It's the way he turns, isn't it? Yeah. He sort of turns and sort of walks out as he's explaining something. And it feels like that bit in a documentary where you've got the, the, the host explaining the concept of something. And I just sort of... And it, they've, they've had like these sort of communications before, but having like two or three of them back to back like they did here, I was like, man, like where are all these cameras installed around the Enterprise that <laughs> they're looking at? You know, what are they looking at every time they're doing though, this? Doesn't it? It doesn't make sense. I mean, obviously, you, it feels less believable in this original series because the sets look so simple and you're like, there's nowhere where it could be hidden. Whereas the modern show is obviously the ships are a lot more complicated looking, so there's a lot of nooks and crannies where there could could be little cameras hidden and things like that. You say that a lot of security cameras like that they're just the little you know, the little half like glass circle just on the ceiling. That is true, but have you ever seen one of those in the show? No, but how often do we see the ceiling? Look, saying that it's on the wall we've never seen because there's no wall on that side of the set does not does not fly with me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, just point it out there. Uh huh. Uh huh. 
But like I say, no, it was Scotty walking in like he was presenting a TV show. That's 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 what got me. I was I was yeah. sitting giggling at myself, uh, how that was filmed. But hey. well, it was amusing. I thought it was interesting how we we seem to have um, done some slightly different time travel rules to what we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Because uh, this time it was like, oh no no, we were always going to come back. This always happened this way. But before it's it's always been interference. You know, we've changed things. Yeah. Um... I wouldn't necessarily say that's different rules per se, it's just that they check it at the end of the episode and go, hey, oh hey, this was always going to happen, so this was just what we were always meant to do. Uh, whereas every other time, it has just been a case of we're worried about interfering and causing something we're not supposed to. I'm just saying other times that like, we've seen them actually change things and like, no, 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 they've had an impact on things and we know they've changed it, whereas here, nothing changed. This, is, this was predetermined that they were always going to go back and always going to do this exact action. I don't think that necessarily means it's different rules, though. It just means that both can apply. Okay. It means that they were, they were always going to come back here and, and do it, what happened. But the other times, they weren't supposed to go back there, and they did. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I buy that, but all right. Yeah. And I hate calling that destiny. I hate, it's not destiny. It's, it's pure science. They always went back. They did. It's, it's a loop. It's a loop, yes. It's not destiny. Destiny's predetermined like you're you're on this path this journey you're always going to go on because that's what your soul's destined for in in this scenario i mean predetermined in the sense that this already happened in the 60s so that when they when it gets to them they have to do it because it's already happened yeah i don't see why both can't exist in the same universe okay you usually i find them pretty contradictory well it's not so much that it's contradictory it's just that there are times where they were worried about interfering they just didn't there was no way for them knowing that they were always going to do this. No, I'm thinking of times like, um, you know, City on the Edge of Forever, where they go mm. back and, you know, they save a life and it's like, oh, hang on. No, this has changed. This has had an impact. Yeah, so so that, because that was an accident, right? They were, they were never supposed to go back that time, whereas this time they were supposed to go back. It was an order. It was a mission. Uh, okay, so I they suppose. Were, so they were always going to go back, and when they checked at the end, oh, nothing's changed. This was supposed to always happen this way. Whereas that in that case, no, no, things altered because something went back and they weren't supposed to. Okay. Okay. It still think, doesn't really work for me, but I'll, I'll let it slide. Yeah, I, I don't think you can't have both. I, I feel like both can, can exist. Alright, I, I, I don't really agree with that, but it's fine. I feel like they contradict each other too much for me. I'm just, like, think about it, right? So, just because one thing was always supposed to happen, why does that mean that some some other time time travel happens? It couldn't have also been... like Because been... I, f- I feel like, okay, if this one was always supposed to happen, right. it's always happened in the past. Yes. So, Every, every in theory, every time travel that that happens has already happened by the time they go back. So they can't change anything because it's a loop, like in the same way that this is a loop. So you can't change. So why it. can you, you make can't... that assumption? Why why do, why do you say in theory it's always always happened? It's always already happened. I mean, because if this one has, then they all have to have. No, they don't. Of course they do. No, they don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get that logic at all. I I just think they're completely different schools of time travel, and you, you can't have both. No, this one's a loop, but that doesn't necessarily mean everything else. Like, there always has to be a first time that some someone goes back. And besides, yeah. who, but who's to say? Here's the thing: who's to say it's set in Asia forever? Who's to say that didn't always happen, and there was always the risk that they were going to alter the timeline, and they always went back and fixed it. Hmm. I'm gonna have to pay much closer attention on these time travel episodes. <laughs> Look. I realise it's probably a fool's a fool's errand trying to like it's like <laughs> defend this when they're probably going to contradict themselves multiple times yeah, going next forward. Time it's going to be different, right? I'm just I'm just saying that I don't necessarily have a problem where sometimes it was always going to happen because they can easily prove it was, and then other times it felt like they were altering things. Fair, fair enough. I, I, I just don't <laughs> like both. I, I, I like one or the other. Don't mix and match. This is still Head and Shoulders Above Legends of Tomorrow, which I enjoy that show, <laughs> but that show does not have time travel rules. It just no, does things. That, that That is more of a mess than Doctor Who in its in its rules. <laughs> that's kind of impressive. Anyway, that's, that's Assignment Earth. It's a weird oddity of an episode, but it's mostly a fun one, so I can't, I can't fault it too much. Um... But hey, there you go. That that is uh, the season finale of Star Trek 
the original series. Uh, before we get to the next episode, uh, we will have actually the top five episodes of season two, along with the, the, the three worst episodes. Uh, so that's what's going to happen next. Uh, that'll probably be when you normally get an episode, and in episode one of season three, you'll probably be like an extra in the middle of the week, and then you'll get the uh, episode two will be back on the regular schedule. Yes. The, the, the point being is that we're not taking up a regular episode slot by uh, the, the top you'll, five. you'll think that because it'll be on the regular episode day. Yes. But you'll you'll get an extra one. Yeah. Yeah. And we just missed a week, so it makes more it makes more of a reason to try and not uh you know extend it by another week by having the, the top five video instead. So you exactly. get the top five video in about a week and then halfway through the week after that you'll get the, the first episode of season three. All right, so if that's not confusing, I don't know. But hey, uh, that is that is us. So that is the Star Trek original series, season two, episode 26, the season finale. Let us know what you think of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all the rest of it. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can get a link to that in the description. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Uh, keep watching TV, guys, and we'll see you next time.